Today we gotta bring you four really big stories surrounding the Nintendo Switch, including one that technically surrounds the Nintendo Switch 2, with another major third-party game looking like it's going to be coming to the platform next year after it releases. Obviously, we don't know when it's releasing next year. We're just pretty confident that it is. Now, before we dive into this news, I just want to remind you that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So if you would subscribe to the channel, drop a like, I'd really appreciate it. And ring-a-ling that ding -a -ling to be notified of all future uploads and live streams. All right, our first story today dives into Splatoon 3. That is because a big update was added today, including some new Amiibo. And as you see here, they announced this over on the Splatoon North American Twitter account or X account. I whatever, social media. It says, next, some shocking news. It's been a full year since we started researching the Splatoon 3 game, and now we've discovered that the next Splatfest from 9-8 to 9-10 celebrates the same anniversary with a divisive theme. Who will be the best leader? Shiver, Fry, or Big Man? We've also discovered a set of badges that can be unlocked by playing in and winning 10x battles and there will be twice as many 10x battles in this special anniversary Splatfest. If you don't quite make it, all is not lost. Your stats will be carried forward to future Splatfest. We're not done yet. If you like badges, you'll love banners. Check out these deep cut banners celebrating the game's first anniversary. Available via the Splatoon 3 channel in news on your Nintendo Switch system. They'll roll out following the Drizzle Season 5.0 update. And just take a close look at these badges you're seeing here. They look pretty slick, obviously based on those three. Last but not least, the deep cut diehards out there will have a series of deep cut amiibo releasing on November 17th. Our research indicates that they will function in a similar manner to other Splatoon amiibo, giving you powerful in-game gear that can boost your battle abilities. Let's take a look at these amiibo. Yeah, looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good, all oh, including the mask. That's really cool. And then, you know, you got Big Man here just rocking out. What a ridiculous looking amiibo, and I love it. Moving on, alert everyone. Uh, with everyone distracted by all the news, the Salmonids are planning an invasion. The SLR Big Run prediction team is expecting a swarm from 5 p.m. Pacific on September 1st to 5 p.m. Pacific on September 3rd. No one invited these Salmonids to the Splatfest, but we'll need your help to send them packing. So just a really awesome update for Splatoon 3, and I'm super stoked about it. I'm really glad they're continuing to make this game tick. Uh, even though I do believe Splatoon 4 will be launching in 2025, you keep Splatoon 3 going for years until then, and maybe even after, because obviously Splatoon 4 will not be, or likely won't be, on the current Switch. Now, next up, we have to talk about a potential Nintendo Switch 2 story here, and we're going to explain why it could also not be, but why it possibly is, and it has to do with a major third-party title, and that title is called Dead Island 2. So as it notes here, it says Dead Island 2 is coming to another platform in the next year. The game is already released for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC via the Epic Game Store. So down below, Embracer Group CEO Lars Wingfors did discuss the performance of the game and its future prospects during the company's quarterly earning call on Thursday. Now, while this game was first announced in 2014, the zombie art action RPG suffered a series of delays and changes of developers during a turbulent production style. Dan Buster, an internal Deep Silver studio, took over development in 2019, and it was finally released in April of 2023 for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC via the Epic Game Store. Dead Island 2 exceeded expectations at launch, selling 1 million copies in three days and 2 million in its first month, according to Embracer. I think Dead Island had a really strong release window, and then we've been seeing more normal performance, according to expectations. Wing Force said today. What we now expect, obviously, is promotions, but primarily the addition of new content coming through, so there is a significant amount of content coming through for the game in the year that would improve sales and the base game as well. Then, looking ahead, we would have a release on another platform that will also drive multiple sales. 
Wing Force didn't elaborate, but he could be referring to plans of a PC version of the game on Steam. Now, the reason we're bringing this up is because it's interesting to think about where we could be seeing this game. It's on PlayStation 4, and it's on Xbox One. So it does bring the possibility of it coming to Nintendo Switch into focus, but it also really brings the possibility of it coming to Nintendo Switch 2 because they specifically said it's coming to a new platform next year. That is awesome. And with it coming to a new platform next year, it really makes you think, well, that could be Nintendo Switch 2 because to bring, to bring this off of the Epic Game Store over to Steam is pretty easy. You're not changing what it's playable on, right? Like, it's going to be playable on PC, right? Whether it's on the Epic Games or on Steam, it would just still be playing on PC. And there's a lot of debate over what platform means. Is Steam considered its own platform? Or is it different than the Epic Game Store, different than good old games? Or is it merely a game delivery service and not an individual platform because the platform itself happens to be personal computers. The PC market is the platform, and these are just the stores on that platform. I'll give you an example. When we talk about Android, we talk about Android as its own platform, but within Android, you have different stores. So there's the Google Play Store. There's the Amazon Store. So there's multiple stores to get your applications from, just shifting how and where you could purchase, but it's still being available on that same platform. Android doesn't really change anything, right? So it's a big debate over what the term platform really means. And obviously it's really clever for uh, the CEO here to use that word because it just leaves the entire question out there. It, it leaves us guessing that they really mean they're just going to move it from Epic Game Store to Steam. Are they going to do that anyways? And that's not what they're talking about. Does it mean it's going to be coming to a Nintendo platform, which would be an entire platform? like an actual platform. So it'll be interesting to see what this means. Uh, obviously for us over on the Nintendo side of things, we clearly speculate it's could be a Nintendo Switch 2 title, especially with them saying 2024 and with the system not too far away, Embracer Group likely has development units and that might've been when they made this decision. Oh, we got the dev kits. Oh man, dude, we could put this game on here. And so we'll do that. We'll put some work in it and release it next year. So We'll have to wait and see what happens. But obviously, we're talking about a platform that hasn't been announced yet. So it is what it is. Now, next up, our next story deals with an update to sales out of Japan. And of course, Pikmin 4 is still crushing it. So we're over here on Go Nintendo where it has the Japanese software and hardware sales from August 7th to August 13th. And we'll just scroll down here and you can already see the software sales here. In the top 10, we have Pikmin 4 for its fourth week in a row, sitting at number one at 69,989 units, now crossing 666,000 units in sales. We obviously see Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Tears of the Kingdom coming in there at two and three, Minecraft at four, Smash Bros. Ultimate at five, Switch Sports at six, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet still doing well at seven, Splatoon 3 just still just doing numbers at number eight. And then Natsuman 20th Century Summer Vacation at nine and Mario Party Superstars at 10. Then we get into the hardware sales though. And this is obviously just always fascinating to watch Nintendo Switch continue to dominate despite a lack of new releases. There was a time when PlayStation 5 for about a month consistently sold more than Switch and everyone was like, oh man, see, Switch is coming to an end even in Japan. Then it's like, oh that didn't last very long, did it? So the Switch OLED moves 71,256 units. It is over 5.3 million units, just that OLED model. The base Switch model sold an additional 12,446 units. And then obviously a Switch Lite coming in with that 8,000. And when you combine all that, the Nintendo Switch sold another 90,000 units in Japan that last week. That's incredible. PlayStation 5 is doing well as well, moving 50,000 or so units itself last week. So that's really cool. And even the Xbox Series X uh, coming in at 1,639, that is slightly ahead of what prior Xbox One systems were doing. So it is nice to see that there is at least a smaller, but still somewhat growing audience in Japan as they now have, you know, right around 400 and, you know, they're, they're, they're encroaching 500,000 uh, units install, you know, obviously nothing compared to PlayStation and Switch, but it's not nothing. So Xbox is making a little bit of headway there. We see some trailing sales from the new 2DS as well. No one really cares. They don't make that anymore. Still, it's really nice to see how well 
uh, things are continuing to go for really uh, a, a lot of interesting reasons in Japan, just watching the Nintendo Switch continue to do well, as I think a lot of the audience there is just sort of waiting for Nintendo's next platform, and I expect an absolutely record-breaking launch for Switch 2 next year. Now, this next story deals with something really strange, and it's... <sighs> I don't agree with how the Pokemon company handled any of this, but essentially today, a couple hours ago, as you're seeing on screen, uh, the Pokemon Presents was reposted. So 8.8.23, you're seeing two hours ago, they reposted the Pokemon Presents. They took down the old one. And there's been a lot of questions as to why they did this. People getting a whole bunch of notifications. And it turns out, you know, if you go into the comment section, you can actually see the reason for it right here at the top. For those wondering why they re-uploaded the Pokemon Presents again, the Scarlet and Violet DLC trailer had remixed music in it without the creator's permission. This one has original and in-game music instead. And you can see the change of music at the 27 minute mark. And it, it, what's interesting is essentially they stole a fan's remix to use in the last trailer, which they are technically legally allowed to do because the remix and, and, and the fan creation is based on a Pokemon song. So they are able to do it from a legal perspective, but they didn't give any accreditation for it. And it's not really a question of whether they're allowed to do it. It just felt like a really crappy thing for the Pokemon company to do. It didn't seem morally right to do it. And then, so they edited it and re-uploaded without it, which is interesting, but also made people get super excited today as a bunch of people got notifications all on the, all over their phones across the world because they replaced this in every territory. And so people got really excited that we got a surprise Pokemon Presents after we just had one. Like, oh man, is there a big game getting announced? And no, it's just the old Pokemon Presents. It's interesting that they did it this way. YouTube does provide tools to remove music. They could have literally went in and just selected, you know, the, the 8 to 10 seconds and just eliminated the music. And sure, it would sound weird replaying the presents with that blank spot in there, but at least you're not re-uploading and re-exciting fans. So I don't really think this was the way to deal with that situation. Also, they could have literally just went into the description of the video and added accreditation and called it a day. It's not like the person was that upset that their music was in there. In fact, they were quite honored to find their music in there. They just wanted, you know, a shout out, basically. It wouldn't have been that hard to put a shout out in there. Well, they didn't want to do that either. So I don't really think this was the right way to deal with it, but this is the way they decided to go with. I would obviously, you know, if they wanted to take down the individual trailer or whatever, I just don't get taken down the whole presents. That to me was just, I don't know. It's a weird thing the Pokemon company did, but you know what? The Pokemon company does a lot of weird things. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. That is our pack of news for today. Hopefully you got something in there that you found to be extremely entertaining or at least informative in some way. And you know what? We're going to be right back at it with more content. We have a live stream tonight. Lots of stuff heading your guys' way. If you missed yesterday's podcast, be sure to check it out. We talked about the potential upcoming Direct. We talked about more Nintendo Switch 2 stuff. We took out some fan questions that got... Very, very interesting. We'll be back at the podcast next week, Wednesday. We do have special guest Switch Force, Zach from Switch Force coming on. And who knows who else? We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to catch you guys in that next video.